Okay, we're recording now. Okay, so we're actually going to start at lesson 1.4. We don't, we usually do this booklet in a different order. So I think that if you counted the pages, I think that goes to page 8. So go to page 8 in this booklet, and we're starting right there. So I'll give you a second to kind of find your spot in the booklet. If you absolutely can't find where you are in the booklet, uh, you could always re-download it from either my blog or from OneNote. Uh, and until you get a chance to do that, you could always just jot stuff down on loose leaf. Um, I'm hoping that a lot of this first lesson is review. It all kind of depends on how much of grade nine's uh, surface area chapter you finished. I know a lot of schools, uh, when I used to teach at Acadia, we always saved that, less, that unit to last, and there was some years where we didn't quite finish it. And last year, being a COVID year, I can see some people maybe not getting that far in this unit. So I'll, I'll try not to go too fast. Um, but surface area is something you should have a concept of even from grade 8. Surface area, by definition, is the total exterior two-dimensional surface space of a three-dimensional object. Another way to think of surface area is if, if you flattened all the surfaces of a three-dimensional object until you have just a two-dimensional object, that space is your surface area. It's like you could take a magical pair of scissors, and this is me drawing a pair of scissors, there we go, and you could cut down all of the edges. What would you have? You don't even have to cut them all. Unfold it like you were unfolding a cereal box. It, let's say that there's, there's that length times width at the bottom that you're sitting on right there. Length times width. Well, this space here would kind of fold down to the left. And that would be a width again, and then this would be my height. And then this right-hand side would fold down to the right, and it'd be the same, I'm trying to draw these the same, as the one on the left. And then this little rooftop, I don't know, depending on whether you cut along this line or on this line, it's either stuck on one side or the other, but it's exactly the same as this rectangle here. Then that just leaves these two big faces, front and back. And what do you know about the front and back? Well, they are as long as this H. So they go along the H here, or maybe I could go like this. They go along this way. So this length and this length have to meet up. They got to be the same. And then there's one this way. And of course, this little, uh, if you again, can you imagine sort of folding that up? You would get this box. Sorry that my drawing's not perfect. But anyway. Um, what would be the calculation for this? Well, notice that you have two rectangles that are this size. You have two rectangles that are this size. And you have two rectangles that are this size. I'll just use check marks to denote them. So I have, my surface area is, two of each type of rectangle. Now, everybody should know there are three formulas, actually four. There are four formulas that you should know I'm going to change my mind again. Five formulas that you should know without anybody helping you. We will never put them on a formula sheet. You should know them from whatever, grade three to grade eight, whenever you learn them. You should know that the area of a rectangle is length times width. You should know that the area of a triangle is, you can either say base times height divided by two or a half times base times height. You should know the area of a circle is pi times radius squared. You should know that the circumference of a circle is either 2 times pi times radius or pi times, oops, or, I was trying to write the word or, or pi times diameter. And you should never have to be reminded of Pythagoras. There's the formulas that I will assume you know. And if you don't, you got to learn them real fast because that is all background knowledge. So meanwhile, every single shape here is a rectangle. It's just that there's three different rectangles. Two of them would be length times width. 
right? Basically, the bottom and the top. Two more of them would be length by height, which would be these guys here, length or height by length, length by height, the two that I folded down that way. And then there's two of them that are width by height. So that's the way I like to think of the formula. Notice it's the same formula if you think of it as two length widths plus two length heights plus two width heights. Same thing. So that's the surface area of a prism. You should have done that last year. Let's, let's do a couple of examples. Surface area of this prism. All right, so what is the surface area? Two of, well, let's go two rectangles that are five by nine. Two rectangles that are five by 13. And two rectangles that are nine by 13. Looking at the picture, the five by nine, that's the front and the back, right? So that's the first multiply I did. The five by 13, those are these guys here, the left and right faces. And the nine by 13 would be the top and the bottom, right? So there we go, that's all six faces. And I've already done the math on this. That would be 454. Now what unit are we in? We're in inches squared, square inches. Now, a cube is a special rectangular prism. It's one where all of the faces happen to be the same. So think about it. If I'm looking at this formula, but L, W, and H are all the same thing, why don't I just call them all L? So I have 2L squared plus 2L squared plus 2L squared, whoops, plus 2L squared. So my formula for this on the surface area of a cube where all of the faces are all squares is just 2 plus 2 plus 2 is 6. 6L squared, which is nice and simple, 6 times 25, which is 150 square centimeters. So there we go. There's rectangular prisms and cubes. That you should have done back in grade 8 or 9. This one's in grade 9 too, so I don't know if everybody got to this one, but you know how a cylinder works. You see, if you take a cylinder, again, if you take a, a magic pair of scissors, there's my scissors, and I cut down, it looks like a duck, and you, you cut straight down that way, uh, what you'll be left with, uh, actually, if you cut around the circle as well, you'd be left with a rectangle, this, this space here is a rectangle, with a circle on top and a circle on the bottom. And since this line here wraps around the circle, right? So this line here, which is the edge of, we're gonna call this from now on the, the lateral face or the lateral surface, the surface that stands up at a right angle to the table that it's sitting on. That's the lateral surface, okay? So the, uh, the lateral surface here is a rectangle. I know it looks, but it's, it's a curve. No, it's not really a curve. You could kind of unfold it and it would be a rectangle, but this length here is the circumference of the circle. So that makes it two times pi times r. r is, of course, the distance from the middle of the circle to the edge. And this length here, this width, is really the height. So I can think of the surface area of a cylinder as being two circles plus a rectangle. And here's what that looks like as a formula. 2 times the area of a circle plus a rectangle that's length times width, but my length is 2 pi r, and my width is height. And that is our cylinder's surface area. And then sometimes in grade 9 we'll do things like what if I wanted to find the surface area of this, the exterior of this, and it didn't have a bottom? What would change about the formula? So any, any idea? You don't have to write this down if you want to, but just see if somebody could answer this in the chat. What if I wanted the surface area of this cylinder and it didn't have a bottom? What would I do then? 
how would that change the formula? Any ideas? I'm looking at the chat. You can turn on your microphone too and answer if you want. I'm recording, I won't say your name. It would remove the first two. Nicely said. I like the fact that you said it removes the first two. This two doesn't go anywhere because that's a part of the circumference. But yeah, instead of two circles, I'd only have one, right? So it would remove this two. So things like that are things that uh, we used to do when we were doing this stuff in grade nine. Here for our first couple examples, we're, we're not playing any tricks on you. We're just using that formula. So let's just use the formula. Surface area is two pi r squared plus two pi r h. Okay, so surface area is two times pi times a radius of three squared plus two times pi times three times a height of six. Okay, I'm not reaching for the calculator on this. This is all multiply, so you can do it in any order you want. So how about I go three squared times two first? Nine times two is 18. And how about two times three times six first, which is six times six, which is 36. And then you can treat pi like it's a variable. That's like 18x plus 36x, which is 54x. And I'm actually fairly happy with that as an answer. This is in square feet. That's a perfectly good answer. If it says round to two decimal places, then yeah, they don't want you to stop there. They want you to take out your calculator and go 54 times pi, which is 169.65 rounded to two decimal places. And that's the answer they're looking for. Please notice if I'd have punched this through my calculator, which is a lot more button punching and a lot more chances I'd have goofed up a mistake, I'd get the same answer. But I kind of like simplifying it to a single calculation first. And that's the way I'm going to do this one too. This one has a little bit of a trick to it. Notice the 36 is all the way across. That's a diameter. So to change that to a radius, I cut it in half. So it's got a radius of 18. So my surface area is... Uh, 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h. Now the numbers are getting a little bit big for me to attack without a calculator, but I'm still going to try. You know what? I'm still going to just take my calculator. No, nah, I'm going to use my calculator. I'm going to say, what's 18 squared? What is 18 squared? Isn't that 324? 324 doubled is 648. So 648 pi plus... Hmm. You know what? There is 18 has another 9 in it. So I'm thinking of 18 like it's 2 times 9. So 9 times 90 is 810, and then doubled and then doubled. So 810 is 1620, which is 3240 doubled. 3240. There we go. And then add those together, and I should get 3, 8, 8, uh, 8. Right? 0 plus 8, 4 plus 8, 2 plus 6 is 8. Haha, <laughs> how about that? 38888. And that's in centimeters squared. And then, of course, we want a decimal, so round to two places. So what's 3,888 times pi? I'd run that through my calculator, and that's going to give me 12,214.51 centimeters squared. There we go. There's a cylinder. How did I get 648? 18 squared doubled. 18 squared I know is 324, and then I times it by 2. Because remember, 2 times pi times 18 squared can be done in any order you like. So I'll go 18 squared times 2, which is how I got that number. Okay. And I got the 3240 the same way. I went 90 times 18, which to me is 9 times 9 times 2 times 2 and then times it by another two. Okay, now that is maybe where grade nine might have ended for a lot of you. Most of you only did um, three-dimensional shapes that are lateral to the surface they sit on. In other words, or maybe they're at right angles to the surface they sit on. So you did you did prisms, you did cylinders. Grade 10 is where you first encounter cones. And cones are interesting little things. First of all, there's parts to a cone. We call the peak the apex. And we usually use the letter S 
to talk about how far the distance is in a straight line from the apex to the edge. The shortest possible distance from the apex to the bottom edge is usually S for slant height. I've seen L. In fact, I think I'm going to show you a little video clip where it's L. Uh, and of course, height, we usually use H. R is still radius. And here's where Pythagoras kicks in. If I give you a problem where I tell you the radius and the height, but I don't tell you the slant height, notice that this slant height and this height here makes a right triangle. So Pythagoras kicks in. And yes, I use a, a handwritten lowercase s, because if I used a regular small s and I'm writing too fast, I'll start to look like a five and I'll confuse myself. So I'll never mix up my s's and my fives if I handwrite the letter s. Okay, so that's... That's the, the relationship between this slant height line and the, how tall the actual cone is. Now, notice that the height isn't actually part of the surface of the cone. It's not on the outside of the cone. So it's actually not part of the surface areas formula. Now, where does the surface areas formula come from? I mean, these formulas are easy, right? This one, okay, no problem. Yeah, it's a rectangle and two circles. And this guy's just six rectangles. You know, two of each kind, two of each of three kinds. How do you come up with the formula for this one? Well, this one takes some imagination. What I'm going to try to get you to do, imagine that I'm going to just sketch a cone here. Or sketch a cone. And imagine that I had you split this cone. Again, I take out my magical scissors. And I split this cone into triangles. Very tall, skinny triangles. And I wish I could draw better. They're all exactly the same. Oh boy, that last one was really bad. I'm going to get rid of that last one. They're all exactly the same. So that means that they all have a length of S. Right? Now you take your magic scissors and you separate all those triangles. Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, well, this isn't really a triangle because this bottom part's a curve. Yeah, but what if you made them so incredibly small that you couldn't even tell it was curved. Can you imagine that? Kind of like all those brain-dead idiots who actually have themselves convinced that the Earth is flat. Because, well, I can't, I can't see a curve. I, look at that. We live in Winnipeg. It's flat. I can see 50 miles. I don't care if you can see 50 miles. 50 miles is still like, what is that? Like 0.02% of, of the circumference of the Earth? Bleh. No wonder you can't see a curve. Imagine that. Imagine I could make this triangle so skinny you can't even tell the bottom's curved. Then I take all those triangles. Okay, this is, where, this is where the real imagination kicks in. And I'll color this one blue. And I'll take that one. And I'll color this one red. And then I will separate them all apart. And I'll rearrange them. And I'll glue them back together. And I'll glue them back together like this. Where there's a... Whoops. Oh, my God. Mm where I'll, I'll glue them back together, where this one here... Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rearrange that. that. That's not supposed to be a rectangle. It's actually supposed to be something more like a parallelogram. And I've greatly, greatly exaggerated this. But then I'll glue one of the blue ones here. And then I'll glue one of the red ones here. And I'll alternate. So then a blue one goes back down here. And again, these are all supposed to be identical, as you can see from my beautiful art skills. And I'll keep going like that until I have completely made a parallelogram. You get the idea. All those triangles are supposed to be the same. And a parallelogram has an area that's basically just base times height. Oh, wait a minute. I know this height. This height is slant height. Oh, and I know how long this base is. This base is half of the circumference of the circle. And circumference is 2 pi r, so this is just pi r. If you have a hard time imagining that, watch this. Here's an animation of that. So we split up. Well, first they unfold it so that it's a half a circle, like I was mentioning. And then they split it into triangles, and then they glue them together, and they get something like a rectangle. 
So if you can kind of imagine that happening, oh, there we go, I'm sharing that apparently. Let me get out of this, there we go. There we go. All right, so if you can imagine that happening, you can see that this surface area is S times pi times R. So this rectangle part is pi times R times S. Oh, but don't forget, it's sitting on a circle. And the area of a circle is pi r squared. And that's my surface area formula. It's a circle plus, again, it's a rectangle. Or a parallelogram is probably a better way to think about it. And that's where that formula comes from. OK, let's use that formula now. On the next page, let's find the surface area of the following right cone. OK, so surface area is pi r squared plus pi r s. And I have all the givens on this one. r is 4.5. And r is 4.5 and s is 12. Okay, this time, um, I don't know what 4.5 squared is, so I'm just gonna run that through my calculator. And please don't, if you're gonna use your calculator anyway, you don't have to give me this number and then give me that number and recopy and repunch decimals. Remember, it's a scientific calculator. It knows that you're supposed to do multiplying and squaring before it does add. So I would actually just take a scientific calculator. I had some real adventures with this calculator this morning. Let's see if it works better this afternoon. Pi is shift, there we go, there's pi, times 4.5 squared, most calculators have a squared button, plus pi times 4.5 times 12. And there you go, boom. It should know to put it in the right order. Round to two places after the six is a three, so it's 233.26. And you lose half a mark if you forget to put units. The units are centimeters squared, because it's an area. And that's it. That's all there is to this fancy new formula. If you've never seen this formula before, it works just like the surface area of a cone, just got slightly different givens in it. This question has one calculation we have to do first. They don't tell us the slant height. They tell us how tall it is. So slant height squared is equal to height squared plus radius squared, which is seven squared plus um, two squared. So S squared is equal to 49 plus four. So S is going to equal the square root of 53. And I'm not going to get the decimal for that because that's not the answer I'm looking for. That's on the way to the answer I'm looking for. I'm just going to work with that the way it is. After all, we just did a whole unit of radicals. Radicals don't scare us anymore. So there's my formula. My S number is a radical, big deal. Pi times 2 squared, right? The radius is 2, plus pi times 2 times the square root of 53. And there we have it. I'm going to just run that through my calculator and get a decimal. I've already done this calculation, so I won't show you the rabbit calculation again. That's 58.31. What unit are we in? Square feet. Some textbooks will say square feet as that, which I find almost annoying, but not wrong. Okay, any questions about how I did the surface area of a cone? It's not a tough formula, actually once you understand what slant height is. All right, let's do something slightly more interpretive with this formula. What if I tell you its surface area and you have to find one of the missing pieces? So here's the formula. Surface area equals pi r squared plus pi r s. I know the surface area is 220. The diameter is 10, which means that the radius is 5. How do I solve for S? Well, what do you think? I think we're going to have to use some algebra. 
So let's see. First of all, let's, let's tidy up 5 squared. 220 is equal to 25 times pi. It doesn't matter what order you multiply two things in. I like looking at the number as 25 pi rather than pi 25. And same thing here. I'm going to say that's 5 times pi times s. How do you get the s isolated? That's basic algebra. Step one, I'm going to minus this from both sides of the equation. And then step two, I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by 5 pi. So my surface area, or sorry, my slant height is 220 minus 25 pi divided by 5 pi. Now be careful when you punch that in your calculator. This time I will go through the calculation with you. Remember that you have to tell the calculator, oh yeah, that subtract has to happen before the divide. The calculator is dumb. It's just going to do bed mass. It's like, just give me bed mass. So if you don't put brackets around the numerator, it won't understand that you have to do that subtract first. So 220 minus 25 times pi, close the bracket, divided by, and you better be careful here. The calculator might think you want to divide by 5, get an answer, and then times that answer by pi. That's not what we want. We want both 5 and pi to be in the denominator here. So I'm going to put a bracket around that too. 5 times pi. Try this on your calculator and see if you get what I get. I'll give you a minute. I get 9 point, it wants two decimal places, so 9.01. And this will be just centimeters, right? This is just a length. It is not an area. So 9.01 centimeters. Okay? See if you can get that. I'll give you a sec to punch buttons. All right? And let me know on the, in the uh, comments on the, on the chat. Let me know if anybody is having a hard time punching buttons. Okay? Notice again that I used my brackets twice on this for the numerator and the denominator. And no, I don't really want to find this number and then write this out. Blech. I've got a beautiful scientific calculator here. I think I just want it to do the work, not me. All right. Anybody struggling with the button punches? Yeah, you can always message me later if, if you're stuck with the button punches. I can help you with your calculators. This is just like the trigonometry unit. For a lot of people, once they kind of get how this works in their calculator, no problem. You just did 5 pi and it worked. Yeah, if you have a fancier kind of a calculator and, and you just type in 5 and then you just type in pi, it knows that meant times. Yeah, but not every calculator is like that. Different, different brands work differently. Okay? And my trick with the, the brackets, some of you have a button on your calculator that says this, which means you hit, you punch in whatever you want, hit this button, and it automatically puts everything else you're going to do over the denominator. Um, there's somebody telling me that their calculator doesn't have pi. If it's a scientific calculator, it has to. It has it somewhere. Okay, we'll, we'll deal with you in a little bit, but it's, it's got it somewhere. It might be a shift. If you're dealing with, if you have this kind of calculator, if you, no, you don't have to do it separately. You do not. You can use your brackets, trust me. Uh, if you have this kind of calculator here, which is a, a, a sharp, pi is nicely its own button, just right above my finger there. Um, if you have one of these guys here, TI-30XA, pi is also its own button. It's on the left-hand side. Okay. If you have a Casio instead of a TI or a Sharp, okay, here's a Casio. Okay, where, where does Casio hide its pi? Oh, you're going to be, you're going to hide it. There we go. It's on the bottom. It's a shift on the bottom button right under the 3. Okay? And as for the person telling me that they had to do this calculation separately, I call nonsense on that. You're just not using your calculator properly. You can do this even with the cheapest of calculators if you know how to work your brackets. We'll do some more calculator stuff together as we go on, but for the people who found this button punching easy, let's move on to uh, some more examples. So that was, I think that's page 10. We didn't number the pages. You can go through the book and number the pages if you want. Okay, next surface area is pyramid. And this one's actually easier. We, we're working backwards. We went from the hard stuff to the easy stuff. Obviously, if you think about this thing, the surface area of this thing 
is the area of its base, which is, of course, a square, plus all of the lateral area. So I'll just say total lateral area. And all of the things that go up from the base are my lateral areas. And in this case, that's four triangles. So the surface area here, I'm not going to give you really a formula. I'm just going to say the surface area is the area of the base plus the area of the triangles. And like I said at the very beginning of the, of the, of the lesson, I don't think I should have to tell you the area of a triangle. That's something you should know. And area of a square, I think you should definitely know that. And what's nice about this is this works for any kind of pyramid. This one here happens to look like a square pyramid for this example. But what if it's not a square? What if it's a rectangle? Then no big deal. It's the area of the base plus the area. Oh, I should put an S, area of the triangles. There we go. So let's do one that is, in fact, a square, first of all. So we got ourselves a square pyramid. So notice here they wrote it into net form for you. It's this area of a square plus four triangles. So my surface area is the area of a square, which is just eight squared, right? Eight times eight. And then remember that the area of a triangle, which again, I'm never going to give you this formula. You should just know it. It's base times height divided by two. So what is the base and height? Now the height is always the distance from the base of the triangle. So the height is always the distance from the base at a right angle up to the highest peak. So in this case, they gave it to us. They told us, yep, it's a 10. So it's base times height divided by two. But oh, wait a minute. There is one of these. How many of these is there again? There's four of them, right? Because all four triangles are the same. And then I'm going to simplify my life a little bit. That's 64. How about 2 goes into 4 twice? So I'm looking at 80 times 2, which is 160. So that's 224 centimeters squared. There we go. OK, good. And a couple people who said they don't have pi, seem to have figured it out. One person said it's shift and then the X to the 10 button. And then somebody who said that they had to do the calculation separately figured out a way to use their bracket. That's good. Again, if anybody's still fighting with calculator later, I'll, I'll try to work with you one-to-one -one once I've done the lesson here. Okay? So there's example one. That's, that's as easy as a pyramid gets. The bottom's a square. What if the bottom's not a square? Here is a regular tetrahedron. Ooh, tetrahedron. That means that it's a pyramid with a triangle on the bottom. So what do we know about this thing? Now, you know what? I don't like the fact that they gave us this number. Let's pretend that this number isn't here. Nuke this number. Uh, death to that number, because it's wrong. If this is a regular tetrahedron, that means that it's like a, uh, a four-sided die. Anybody here play any uh, fancy role-playing games where they got to roll a four-sided die? A four-sided die is three identical, or sorry, four identical triangles. And if the triangles are identical, every face, it says here that this line's five, so every face is a regular equilateral triangle, and they're all five. And when they said that this line was 4.3, and again, I nuked it, it's not 4.3. It's actually not 4.3 because um, that's like an estimate. Let's find out exactly how high this line is, and let's use our radical skills. Because, okay, if I cut that height that way, that's the height of this triangle, notice that I've cut the equilateral triangle in half. So the distance across the bottom is 2.5. So now I have this. I have a height, I have a 2.5, and I have a 5. Guess how we're going to find that height? We're going to find it by using Pythagoras. h squared plus 2.5 squared is equal to 5 squared. So that means my height squared is 25 minus uh, 2.5 squared is 6.25. And that makes my height squared equal to 18.75, which means my height is the square root of 18.75. Now, is 18.75 a perfect square? I don't think so. 
And to be honest, I don't care because I'm just going to use it as the square root of 18.75 in my next calculation. So my surface area is that there are four identical triangles. Just, just for fun, what is 18? Okay, I'm going to figure it out. What is 18.75? How close were they with this sad little 4.3 number to the real number? 18.75 square rooted. It's 4.33. Well, it's actually pretty close. It's 4.3301. So they, they gave us 4.3. They, they lost three hundredths of accuracy at least. But we have perfect accuracy because we're better than them. So surface area is, I have four triangles. So let's see, that's going to be four times the base, which is five. The height, which I just figured out, is the square root of 18.75 divided by two. Let's make our lives easier. How many twos go into four? Two. So I'm looking at 10 times the square root of 18.75. That's what I'm going to punch in my calculator. And that's going to be 43.3. And if I round to two places, now be careful with this. When I round this to two places, it's a zero and then it's a one. That means I need that zero there. If you didn't write that zero down because you figure, ah, it's a zero, so I don't need it. It doesn't have any value. Yeah, but then I don't know if you rounded to the right number of decimal places. Right? Science teachers care about this a lot. This is one of those whole significant figures things. If you haven't done your grade 10 science yet, you will, and you'll talk about significant digits and stuff. And it's a big deal to the science guys. So here in the math, when it says to two decimal places, if that second decimal place is a zero, you write it down, or else we don't know that you know how to round properly. Okay? Apparently I have a side conversation going on in the chat about D4 dice because in, in Legend of Link and stuff. Okay, very nice. Do you, do you use you use a four-sided die in Legend of Link? Really? Okay. All right. This one, now check this out. This is not a square-based pyramid. It's a rectangle-based pyramid. So I'm going to write this down. Please write this down with me. Note that there's two different triangles happening here. Right? There's two different triangles going on. One of them has a base of 5 and a height of 6. The other one has a base of 9 and a height of 4.7. So my surface area here is the area of the rectangle. I'm going to draw this sort of schematically. It's the area of a rectangle plus the area of a wide triangle. Oh, whoops. Times two, because there's two of them, right? The front and the back. Plus the area of a slightly skinnier triangle times two. That'd be the left and right. And there you go. You can kind of see it here, right? Clearly, these two triangles are smaller than those two, right? So what's that look like formula-wise? Well, rectangle is just five by nine. That should be easy, right? That's grade three math. And now the triangles. So there's two triangles that are wider. I'll do them first. There's two triangles that are 5 by 9 divided by 2, right? Because remember, the area of a triangle is base times height divided by 2. Then there's two triangles that are, um, oh, sorry. No, it's not 5 by 9. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Let me write that again. It's 9 by 4.7. That's better. Sorry. I wasn't reading my own givens very well there. Right? 9 by 4.7. So there's two triangles like that. Then there's two triangles that are 5 by 6. Okay, notice what you can simplify right away when you're doing this calculation. 2 would divide 2. 2 would divide 2. Bye-bye. So my final answer is going to be 45 plus whatever 9 times 4.7 is plus 30. So why don't I, let's see, what's 45 and 30? 75? There, that's what I'm going to punch in my calculator. And when I do that, I get 117 point. I only round it to one decimal place for some reason. So I'm going to punch buttons again. I don't know why my work did that. 75 plus 9 times 4.7. Is there only, oh, because it only has one decimal place. So there we go. Once again, put a zero on it. And there we have it. Okay. Any questions on how I did that one? All right, your turn. 
What if, this is graduate level for this type of pyramid now, what if we give you one where I don't tell you how much their heights are. All I tell you are how long these lines are. So this one here is eight. Now, do I know for a fact that all of these edges are eight? Well, what do you think? Don't they kind of have to be? Let's think about why that is. Do they all have to be eight? And the answer is yes, they do. So what are we going to do with this guy? Well, how about, I'm glad they put letters on here. That makes life easier. How about I notice that if I'm told, oh, wait a minute, I just realized something. I'm not looking at this properly. Eight is not how long these edges are. No, 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 no. Eight is how tall it is. Okay, let me use a different color. Maybe you can see this better. Notice that eight is how tall the pyramid is in the middle, from the middle to the top, the actual height of the pyramid. So the height of the pyramid is eight. So I am going to make a couple of triangles here. I need to know this height of this outside triangle on the left. And I'm going to redraw it over here. I just drew G to F, right? That's the line at the bottom. And it makes a right angle with the, the height. Imagine the height like it's a pole in the middle of this and it's a tent. Okay, and this is 8. How far is it from F to G, though? Any ideas? How far is it from F to G? Can you look at that picture and figure that out? Any ideas? I'm looking at the chat. Who can tell me how far it is from F to G? Yes, it's exactly 3, because doesn't it have to be half of this distance here? You might be thinking, how do you know for sure that that height's in the middle? because it has to be. Right, it's 6 divided by 2, so that's 3. So I'm going to find A to G. So AG squared is equal to 3 squared plus 8 squared, using Pythagoras, right? So AG is going to be 9 plus 64 which is 73, and of course it's square rooted. Okay, now I'm going to use a different color. I'm going to use blue. What else do I need to know? I need to know this height, because these are different triangles, right? Because this one's only, the, this, this, these edges are different. So now I want this blue triangle. So I'm going to draw the blue one over here. What does the blue one have in common with the red one? Well, they both have the same height. They're both eight tall. But now the blue one goes from, and let me make this a little smaller so I can fit everything in. There we go. The blue one goes from F to H, and then up to the apex at A. A for apex, that makes sense. Is this three? No, it isn't. Do you notice that from here to here is four, so this little distance has to be two. So AH squared is equal to two squared plus eight squared. So AH squared is equal to four plus 64. So AH squared is equal to 68. So AH is the square root of 68. I think I'm ready to now calculate my total surface area. I now know how tall my triangles are. My surface area is a rectangle plus two of one type of triangle plus two times a skinnier type of triangle. They should both be the same height, but you get the idea. So rectangles are just length times width, four by six. And then Let's deal with the uh, let's deal with the wider one first. So the, the wider one, or sorry, not wider, the, the smaller one first. The smaller one is two times base times height divided by two. This one is two times base times height divided by two. All right, the divide by twos and times by twos cancel, and I'm looking at 30 plus whatever 6 root 68 is plus whatever 4 root 73 is, eh, I'm going to run that through the calculator. And I'm going to get 107.65 square meters. And that's the skinny on surface area. Okay, I'm going to stop the lesson.